If you want to survive in the future, you've got to produce more than you consume. And this is why civilization will hopefully keep advancing. Hi, I'm Nick Gillespie with Reason TV, and today we're very happy and privileged to be talking with Doug Casey. He is an investment guru to uh, the planet, and he's also the uh, subject of the new book, Totally Incorrect Conversations with Doug Casey, as told to Lewis James. Thank you so much for joining us, Doug. Pleasure, Doug. Totally Incorrect. What, uh, what brought this about? Why the conversations and why now? Well, it, it's just my opinions on what's going on in the world today. Although I cover everything from ancient Rome to drugs to politics to investments, I pretty much cover the waterfront. What is the most politically incorrect or totally incorrect thing that you say in the book? Well, pick a subject, any subject. I suggested that the U.S. default on the national debt in an honest way. They're going to default on it anyway. There's no question about well, okay, that. Well, stop for a second. When they're going to default uh, uh, eventually. What do you mean by that? Well, there's two ways they can default on it, essentially. One is by creating trillions and trillions of more currency units, mm -hmm. and they can pay it off nominally, right. but they're worth nothing. Right. So, I mean, and you're the saying other they, is they can to inflate say, it away, well, and that's I, the, that's the, uh, that's the way, dishonest way to do the, it. The dishonest way, but the likely way. More likely right. there, uh, the way I recommend is to do it the way Argentina has mm -hmm. done it. That's a country that I basically live in at this mm -hmm. point. And that's to, quite candidly, just tell people, we're not going to give it to you. Mm -hmm. And I recommend defaulting on the debt because, well, for several reasons. Perhaps the best one is that I don't think it's correct to make the next several generations mm -hmm. of Americans indentured servants to pay back the debt. But then if you default on the debt, uh, debt aren't, you, uh, aren't you stiffing uh, people now, yes. uh, creditors now? Well, you're quite correct. Let's see who we're stiffing. We're stiffing the people that have lent the government money, and I think they should be punished for having financed mm -hmm. its destructive at a minimum, Here's a schemes. question for you. When Argentina defaulted and, uh, you know, kind of reset its economy, mm -hmm. uh, you know, Argentina is a small uh, economy relative to the, to the, certainly to the size of the U.S., but to the global economy. What would happen if they just said, you know what, screw it, we're not, you know, we're done. We're starting tomorrow. We're starting with a new currency. We're going to call it the Casey. And it's going to be a true hard currency that's backed by reality rather well, than prom that would vague be, promises. That would be the first mistake. Yeah. Because it's not a good idea to have a national currency. Money is a medium of exchange and a store of value. There's no necessity for a national currency. It should simply be, I'd suggest, gold. It's the one of 92. You would rather have a, a, I mean, you, you would, your preferred vision would be one of competing currencies, particularly private currencies. I that would people, have to show, I mean, this happens anyway. Sure. But they would have to compete on a market based on what people think about that. People will should use whatever they wish for currency. And I'm of the opinion, it's just an opinion, that gold would triumph because it has some unique benefits. It's better than Bitcoin and so forth. All these things perhaps have a, have a place, sure. Do you feel more optimistic or less optimistic just about you know, where we're going to be tomorrow compared to where we are today? Yeah, well, this is a question about human nature. And I have two somewhat conflicting views. One law that I believe in, and I don't believe in most laws, but I believe in Pareto's law, the 80-20 rule. And one application of that, in my opinion, is that 80% of people are basically decent, get along, go along. But we've had a cancer growing uh, in this geographical area for many years, and at this point it's metastasized and it's gotten huge. These people that we've had for the last 40 years, it's very much like the Roman Empire. I mean, uh, after uh, Augustus, they got Tiberius, and everybody was so happy when Tiberius died. But then they got Claudius, and then they got Caligula. Oh, glad he's dead. Now they yeah. get Nero. Right. As, a, as an exit question, what do, what do you do? You say you live mostly in Argentina now. Is that, is that the best solution, to go find a place where you can kind of, uh, you know, do your own thing on your own terms? And are those places, maybe not in the geographical United States, but are those places growing more uh, around the planet? I like living outside of the United States because 
if you're here in the U.S., you're especially here in Washington, D.C., where we are, you're in the heart of the beast. Uh, it's best to be away from them physically. And living in a foreign country where you are not a citizen, the government doesn't consi consider you a piece of its property. You're the property of somebody else, and you're treated politely as a visitor who can leave. So you have much more freedom being, in effect, a permanent tourist in that country. And most of these foreign governments uh, don't have the same interests as the U.S. Uh, does. In the case of Argentina, for instance, uh, the people in government are mainly interested in, in lining their pockets and stealing. They're not terribly interested in controlling you the way they are here. Doug Casey, he is the subject and uh, speaking voice of the new collection of conversations, Totally Incorrect. Thanks for talking with Reason TV. Pleasure, Nick.